we then go to the announce desk where Tim Ross, he's a preacher. He's a man of faith. Oh, man, this guy, <laughs> this guy cutting the promo for Steve Austin. Yes. He's getting all these viewers all fired up for the return of Stone Cold. It was awesome. So the main event is DDP and Rhino versus The Undertaker and Kane. It goes like two minutes. A nothing match. Yeah. yeah. Nobody cares. I don't nope. think Paige even tagged in. No. And then the Alliance attacks for what I guess is the DQ, although the bell never rang. Mm-hmm. And finally, a wave of W... For the first time all night, WWF fought back. They sent a wave of guys in. But then another wave of WCW guys come out. And I'm watching, and there's like 25 guys in the ring all dressed in black. And Jim Ross is saying, oh, WWF is outnumbered. I'm like, they are? <laughs> How can you tell? We go to the parking lot. Dudes are fighting in the parking lot. When Austin arrives in his truck, he's got his pool cue, and he starts beating some ass out there. Go back to the ring for a while. And, of course, everyone saw Austin on the big screen. They know he's there now. And we go back to the ring for a minute or two, and then we go somewhere else backstage, and Austin comes in through the door and starts kicking everyone's ass there. And we go back to the ring for a solid minute, and it's very obvious what's going to happen, and everyone wants it to happen, and they can't wait, and they're chanting Austin's name, and, like... There's a delay, but it goes exactly as long to build anticipation as it should have. If it had happened right away, it would have been not as great. And if it went on any longer, it would have been less great. But it, it, there's enough, just, just enough to build anticipation to a peak. And then the glass shatters and everyone goes crazy. <laughs> crazy, 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 crazy. He storms down to the ring. It is the Texas Rattlesnake DTA Stone Cold Steve Austin. Starts stunning people left and right. Chris Canyon takes the best bump for a stunner. <laughs> There's 50 guys in the ring, so I don't even know how he pulled it off, but it's awesome. And Taker and Kane hit choke slams, and when the smoke clears, angles down in the corner, and Taker extends his hand to pull him up, and Team WWF is standing united. And Jim Ross, the best salesman, he's screaming mm-hmm. with every muscle from his toes to his ears, screaming as loud as he can. What a great pay-per-view it's going to be. Team WWF is united. The face of sports entertainment is going to change this Sunday. The segment was so white hot great. Just great. And then then they go backstage, and of course we have to end with heat. Steph and Shane yell at Freddie Blassie as he's leaving. Steph says, Freddie... You and the WWF both have a lot in common. You're both about to die. I'm like, fuck you. First off, the guy is dead in less than two years. So what the fuck was even the point of being such a shithead to this poor guy? And second off, come on. Even in storyline, like, we're supposed to believe that Stephanie McMahon is, like, excited for Freddie Blassie to die. Yeah. I mean, it was just so fucking dumb in real life. It was so fucking dumb in storyline. It made me just fucking hate these people. Well, but that's the kind of people they are. I'm just going to pretend like this shit didn't happen. Fuck them. Here's what I got to say about Steve Austin. If you go to my Twitter right now, I have tweeted out a book club podcast that I did with Garrett, where we're talking about death of WCW, his fight game podcast, book club Zoom chat. There's audio and video. You can head up there to my Twitter and and check it out. But anyway, the point of this is, reviewing the book, people were asking, let's say you do a third edition, a third, Ugh. the 25th anniversary. What would you, what would you do differently? And, you know, one of the things I said was, I'd have been much harder on Nitro. I was not nearly hard enough, even with two editions. Well, when I watched this fucking angle right here, somebody had mentioned to me, Invasion did 775,000 buys. And the narrative that I have believed and wrote about for the last 20-something years is, look at how well this thing would have done. If you would have got Goldberg and Hogan and Nash and Sting and whoever, that's all true, okay? But... This 775,000 buys, this was the biggest non-WrestleMania pay-per-view they'd ever done, okay? So, clearly, 
some fans were into this invasion, even though most of the invading team is WWE guys, and most of the WWE team, they're all WWE guys, okay? That was part of it. But after watching this show and talking to some people, this show did this gigantic fucking number in large part because the old Stone Cold Steve Austin came back. This fucking pop when this guy came out to run roughshod and give stunners to everybody, it was like it was 1999-2000 all over again. This period, by the way, they were already on the downswing because he turned heel. Who the fuck could have watched this and thought, you know, I got a great idea. On Sunday, spoiler everybody, he's going to fuck WWE and he's going to go back heel. (gasps) Do you realize what a brain dead fucking moron you got to (laughs) be to see the reaction of the fans on this show and come up with that fucking idea? If he would have stayed babyface and he would have led, they could have, Team WWF should have lost on at, at the uh, inaugural brawl. Sure. WCW has to win, okay? Which, great. So then, Team WWF, the WWF side, they have to have a journey to eventually defeat World Championship Wrestling. Steve Austin should have been the babyface leading that fucking journey. How can you not see this? Am I the only one? No. Everyone has seen it for 20 years. It was like the Lord came back to Craig's (laughs) church. These people (laughs) lost their fucking minds. Craig, when did God leave your church? He never did. I'm talking if he walked in the front door on Sunday. I see. Which clearly he didn't do if you listen to Craig's show on Sunday. What? Remember he said something... Craigish, and you asked, did you go to church today? And he said, I don't remember. That was his exact words. <laughs> this was unbelievable. And they just fuck it all up on Sunday again. Yeah. How? Don't know. <laughs> it's like I remember what happened. And I remember how stupid we all thought it was at the time and how stupid it looked throughout the years whenever we talked about it. When you go back and watch it now, yes, you realize we underrated the stupidity of it all. I literally had to be reminded that he goes heel again. Yeah. Because even though I lived through this and I wrote about it, I watched this and I can't even conceive of it. Because, yeah, because like you say, it's one thing because he had been Steve Austin for a while and all of us are paranoid. You don't want to get stale. You got to try to keep yourself fresh. So he he wanted to go. It was his idea. He wanted to go heel. Then he wanted to be the comedy stuff. And as comedy, it's great. But then... But they had evidence... (laughs) <laughs> what people actually wanted. Fucking was... evidence right in front of your own eyes. Yes. And they opted not to believe that evidence and go with what they thought was right. The show depressed me. <laughs> and we haven't even watched next week's show yet. And they spoil it on the WWE Network in the blurb. Do they? And I read it and I still can't believe it happened. <laughs> I'm waiting for this to be like... I'm in an alternate timeline, and, like, next week I watch Invasion, and they actually do shit right. I'm still waiting for, like, is that going to happen one of these days? Or are we really reliving this horrible period, and it's going to be worse than we remembered? If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.